Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Nick Howell and today I want to take you through a kind of a decision tree when you're evaluating cloud storage and talk to you about some of the options that are available to you in the cloud providers themselves natively as well as some of the ones that we offer here at NetApp that directly integrate with those cloud providers. As leaders in IT, you should be asking yourselves, cloud storage, do I really need it? Do I need cloud storage? That's honestly the first question you should be asking and one of the safe answers is no, you may not need it. Now with the movement of the way things are happening in, in cloud and the way uh, applications are being broken down into microservices, you're gonna have to learn how to operate within the cloud and be able to move data sets around back and forth. Uh, many ways how we did with virtualization 10 or so years ago, we had to learn how to redo storage in a different way or in the shared storage paradigm so that multiple VMs could manage it and, and access it, right? It was different. It, before, in the before times, every application had their own like rack of storage that would, would be accessed individually from other applications. VMs brought about shared storage, and now we're talking about breaking things down even further. So the very first question you should ask yourself, do I need cloud storage? It's okay to say no. You don't have to have it. And if you don't, uh, if, you, if the answer is no and you don't need it, We've got a ton of products to help that we've been helping customers with for decades, including our top tier all flash FAS arrays. We've got our FAS systems uh, that are more of our capacity line. We've got E-Series, which is screaming fast performance uh, with none of the frills. We've got our storage grid object storage solution that's a, a, an on-prem solution as well. And of course, we've got Solid Fire for that node-based service provider type of uh, scalable scale-out workloads. So if you don't need cloud storage, it's okay we've still got you covered, right? However, if you do need cloud storage and your answer to this is in the affirmative of yes, then you've got some options to talk about because the first thing you need to talk to yourself about is what cloud provider do I wanna use? How am I gonna take advantage of this? And do I need to pick one? Do I need to make an arrangement with one cloud provider? Uh, to get the best pricing, or do I make a do I stay away from that to avoid any kind of lock-in to one provider's services and be able to move multi-cloud, including my on-prem solutions? Can I hook up to multiple clouds? The answer is yes, and that's sort of a strategic decision that you, as a company and as a as an IT department, have to make. Do you want to? wholly dedicate yourselves, your staffs and your certification and all of that stuff to one cloud provider? Or do you want to keep things flexible? That's really a, before you ever talk about storage, that's something you and your organization should talk about for sure. But let's just go over each of the cloud providers, what they offer natively and how we at NetApp integrate with each of those cloud providers. So let's start over here with AWS. Now we've got a bunch of stuff and some of the newest stuff that we've just announced uh, to be able to take advantage of it. But just to go over what's available to you today, it's basically EBS, EFS, and of course, S3 for object. I forgot to write that one up there a second ago. You can't forget about S3. S3 is one of the hottest things out there, and it's one of the things that most companies integrate into first and foremost, is, is being able to dump object storage up there. And frankly, the development community has taken object storage by storm and is using it for a lot of things right now outside of production workloads. So EBS is your block storage or elastic block storage. EFS is your elastic file services or file storage. S3 is your object storage. So again, here's another little decision tree. If you wanna go with AWS, do you need block storage? Do you wanna manage individual performance? Does your application require block level access? These are things that you need to think about as you're migrating storage up to the cloud. If you just need NFS and SMB, EFS might get it done for you. You could use the native service there. Um, or if you just need object, you can certainly do things like infrequent access buckets in S3 to be able to tier cold data. You can store development materials, source code, anything like that in their own individual buckets and be able to clone and move those out anywhere that you would need them. However, if you want something that's a little more, I don't know, enterprisey, and what I mean by that is highly available, highly performant, uh, more of what you'd be used to working with on-prem uh, from a performance and resiliency perspective, you may want to look at what we've got going on here at NetApp. We have our cloud volumes on tap, which is where you take uh, an instance of our operating system that lives on our storage arrays and run it in virtual machines yourselves. And you can orchestrate that through Cloud Manager, 
uh, our universal control plane to be able to deliver that kind of as a service. You can create volumes, you can share those volumes out via NFS or SMB, you can replicate that data using our, our Snap Mirror technology, you can generate backups from it using our Snap Vault technology. So if you're an ONTAP engineer and you need all of the flex and snap words, that you've grown and loved using a, an ONTAP array or a NetApp array, you're probably gonna have a really good time with Cloud Volumes ONTAP. It can be delivered in a one a multi-year license deal, or we can deliver it to you in a pay-as-you-go model if you're just looking for some capacity. Now, recently announced, we also, uh, or AWS recently announced, that they're bringing ONTAP into uh, AWS natively. So we do have FSX for NetApp ONTAP as an option for you as well. And that kind of blurs the lines between infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. It's delivered as, a, as an offering, as a pay-as-you-go offering, based on the capacity that you use, but you do get all of the features and functionality of ONTAP as part of that managed service. So you never have to touch, touch RAID groups or aggregates or any of those constructs that a storage engineer would know about, but you still get all of the benefits and bells and whistles of a Cloud Volumes ONTAP delivered as a native first-party service directly billed to your AWS account. Pretty cool, right? I, I, it's, I can't wait to start seeing what customers are architecting using FSX for NetApp ONTAP. And really at the end of the day, those are your two big options, right? Do you want it as a managed service or do you want to be responsible and control the billing for all of the underlying infrastructure costs in addition to the service that's being delivered to you, all right? That's AWS. Let's move over and talk about Google Cloud because Google Cloud has something similar. They have their Google Volumes, they have their Google Object, right? So you can use that natively as storage today. Under the covers, however, we also at NetApp have our cloud volume service, which you can enable in the marketplace to get access to highly performant, highly resilient uh, enterprise storage arrays, an A700 all flash FAS at that, uh, if you know our model numbers, to be able to deliver NFS and SMB high performance storage to your workloads applications. Now, these are delivered in multiple service levels uh, standard, premium, and extreme. So you, that will determine the level of throughput and IOPS that you're able to drive out of those storage offerings. And it's all billed uh, to your Google Cloud bill. You never have to really think about it too much. The floor for you is creating a new volume. What do you want to name it? How fast do you want it to be? How big do you want it to be? And what region do you want to put it in? That's it. Here's the other cool thing about Google that not enough people talk about as a quick aside, the Google Premium Backbone. Did you know that you can uh, actually access your data between regions uh, without ever touching the internet? Look into the Google Cloud Premium Backbone. I promise you won't be disappointed. So it becomes a decision tree of sorts of, do I want to manage the infrastructure as VMs and then manage the storage that's delivered on top of that and how it's delivered and still maintain access to all of the snapshots and flex words and all of that stuff that uh, ONTAP is known and loved for, cool, go with CVO, uh, CVO because that is, that is what that is there for. If you just want volumes, if you just want raw horsepower and performance, CVS is the way to go. A few months ago, we also announced a software version of CVS to be able to run in GKE as a pod. So if you want to deliver native Kubernetes native storage to your pods inside of your GKE clusters, you now have a CVS SW option that you can use to mount up to your for PVCs and pods and such inside of GKE. So that's Google Cloud. Let's go over and finally close off with Azure here. If you decide to go with Azure or you're evaluating Azure, you've got your options as well. Forever, you've had Azure Disks, Azure Files, and Azure Blob. Again, block, file, object is the way to think about each of those. But also over here, NetApp brings to the table a serv service similar to what we talked about with Google Cloud CVS with Azure NetApp Files. The core difference is, is that Microsoft decided to natively integrate it into the Azure portal so that you don't have to deal with going through the marketplace or enabling an additional service. You simply go in, create your storage accounts, create your capacity pools and your volumes, integrate it with your Azure AD, mount it over NFS and SMB, delegate your subnets to your VNets, and you're good to go. You never touched a disk group, you never touched a, uh, an aggregate, none of that stuff. You're delivering volumes at high performance to all of your workloads in multiple service levels. The other option you have, again, is CVO. 
Now, this becomes an architectural conversation when you're choosing clouds, because as I was saying at the beginning, if you want to do multiple clouds, you're going to need a way to move data sets between those two cloud, between those multiple clouds, and that includes your on-prem infrastructure. So strategically, you might choose to go with a CVO because of the sort of universal support for SnapMirror that it has. If you've got ONTAP on-prem and multiple storage arrays, you're going to want to take advantage of SnapMirror and SnapVault. The beauty is CVO is on tap as a VM, for lack of a better description. You're able to still get all of those flex and snap words. So if you want to cascade or fan out snap mirrors to multiple clouds for doing test and dev in one cloud, and maybe you're doing backup and recovery in another cloud or disaster recovery, excuse me. Or if you want to be able to mirror uh, data sets between two different cloud providers without being locked into one. Maybe you layer an instance of CVO on top of multiple cloud providers and create snap mirrors between all of them. The beauty is much like your on-prem primary and secondary data centers is as long as the plumbing is there, as long as the networking is in place and they can communicate with each other, you can mirror data back and forth between cloud, any instance of CVO in any cloud provider. So those are your those are your choices there, guys. When you're when you're talking about cloud storage, it really comes down to: Do you want to commit to one cloud provider, or do you want to be able to be flexible and use all of them? And at the end of the day, it really just comes down to uh, one decision tree to be able to start at the top. But start at the top. Don't start at the bottom and try and work your way backwards. Do you really need cloud storage? My answer would always be yes. And the beauty of it is, is that I think there's a healthy mix of both here for on-prem and cloud and mixing it all together in a hybrid multi-cloud sort of scenario where you've got all of your on-prem kit that you've had for decades and you love working with it, but you can mirror it up to any cloud provider at any time and you can take advantage, those workloads once those data sets are there that you're gonna build on top of those data sets can take advantage of the high performance offerings that are also available alongside of it. I hope this helped you guys make your decisions about how to get into the cloud with all of your storage and which one to choose. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel here to uh, look at other volumes as I'm deep diving on each of these different uh, offerings from the cloud providers and from NetApp uh, over the course of the next few months. So until next time, take care.